everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today I have a very juicy story for you. Um, as many of you know, I have always um, shared so openly about my relationship with Faraday and also the idea around open relating, so non-monogamy, ethical non-monogamy, whatever you want to call it. And this episode is a very real and juicy and raw story of me exploring this dynamic and what happened and also how it felt and how it affected my relationship with Faraday, all the things. So as Faraday likes to say, buckle up and get ready for a very funny ride, crazy ride. Um, so yeah, the story begins with me opening my Instagram on a Sunday morning and this was last Sunday um, right before we went to Malaysia and I get a message from a guy who was like I would like to book a reading with you so if you guys don't know I, I do um, human design readings which is like one hour of me channeling your higher self and empowering you and all the fun stuff so I do those in person here on the island and and people reach out to me on Instagram all the time to book them so this this wasn't this wasn't unusual. What was unusual was the vibration of how the guy was sending the message. Like he was like very I don't know, I just could tell that it was like very flirty vibes and and the difference also was that when I checked out his Instagram, I was also attracted to him. So like I was immediately like, "Ooh, this is mutual." <laughs> and um So then I messaged him and I was like, okay, he, so he messaged me and said, I want to do a reading. And I was like, okay, so wait, hold on one second. So he messages me and he's like, yeah, I want to do a reading. I'm only in town for like a short time and, you know, I'm available to do it today or like whenever, whenever is good for you. And I was like, okay, um, yeah, I'm also down to do this. Uh, and I just gave him back some times and stuff. And then like my initial inclination was to ask him, <laughs> like I almost straight up wanted to ask him like, do you want a reading or do you want to go on a date? Because he didn't say anything directly. Like I'm into you. He, but, well, he said, I like your vibration or something, but people say that all the time. But I just could feel a vibe, you know, like energy sensing is real. Anyways, so I just was, and then I, I even typed it out. I was like, should I, do you want to, <laughs> something like, do you, do you really want a reading or do you want to go on a date or something? And then I thought, no, 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 no. I'm going to be in my feminine. If someone wants a reading, I'm not going to ask them if they want a date. Um, like maybe I'm reading into this too much. And also if he does want that, then he'll ask for it. You know, like I'm good. I feel very full in my relationship with Faraday and happy in my life and all of this beautiful stuff. So, I sent him my dates back and then he was like, yeah, I, I would actually like to do one today. Like I, I'm busy with the yoga teacher training the rest of the week and today's my only day off, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay. So I booked it for later in the afternoon and then he came over and it was just like this immediate feeling of like attraction, I guess. Like I'll, I can only speak for myself in that moment. And yeah, there was definitely like flirty vibes. And then I, I always ask people like, how did you find me? Like, how did you, you know, how, how did you get to this place where you are now having a reading with me? Because I find it really beautiful to hear the synchronicity of how everyone finds me because it is all universal synchronicity. And then he said, I saw you on a dating app. And then the same day you popped up as suggested on my Instagram. And I thought, oh my God, this must be a sign from the universe. And then I just checked out some of your posts and then realized you had a podcast and I listened to some of your podcasts. And then I was like, oh my God, I have to meet this woman. And I was just like thinking, uh, okay, that's cool. And then he was just was like, I really, I was thinking like, actually I told a friend this later and she was like, the amount of checking up that he did on you before he met you, like normally I would consider that creepy, but because he's hot, I don't consider it creepy or because you like, have you seen this meme? There's this meme where it's like the level of creepiness of someone like hitting on you depends on how much you actually find them attractive. Like for instance, if someone that you actually find really attractive is very forward and is like very direct, you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. I'm so excited. That's amazing. And if you don't find them attractive, you're like, Oh, get away from me. You're creep. 
So I just find that really funny. But yeah, so I was, I was into it. <laughs> and so I just thought, I was just kind of, I got to the point where I was like kind of just giggling, <laughs> which is also not normal for me. And, and so I asked him straight up. And the, so this was like right when he came to do the reading. And so I asked him, do you, do you actually want a reading right now? Or like what, I'm just being direct here. And he's like, no, I really do. I am super into human design and I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. And so I said, okay. Um, and, and then I did the reading for him and then he, he was like, um, I want to let you know that I am very attracted to you. So I don't know, like I, you know, I saw that you are non-monogamous and I don't really know how that works with you. So basically I just want to let you know that this is a thing. And, and this is, this happens a lot with people because you know, like with monogamy, it's super easy to see how the game is played. It's like, I'm with this person, you know, the rules are already set by society, by religion, by whatever, the programming that we were raised with, which in monogamy is like, you're with one person, so therefore you're not with anyone else. In non-monogamy, ethical non-monogamy, openness, whatever you want to call it, the only rules are the ones that you make up. And so in every single dynamic that you have with someone, like, it can be anything. And so it's like really important to like check in. And I love that people do this because also it can change at any moment. It's like the agreements where you build your trust is on the agreements that you make with the person that you're, you're dating and you're, you're in love with. So with Faraday and I, like what agreements we have to create a safe space for each other emotionally to protect each other's hearts, to, you know, make sure that we both are feeling good in our bodies the whole way through. That's the most important thing. And anyone else who enters into that dynamic, they need to, must honor and respect that, like my dynamic with Faraday in order for me to feel comfortable playing with them or wanting to interact with them in a romantic way. Because I'm like, my, my main connection, my most important connection, the person that is my chosen person is Faraday. And everyone else can, you know, come and play if they understand that dynamic and they respect it and honor it. And so I, I felt good that this, this person, he, um, he honored that and was like just asking and checking in. And then I said to him, I was like, well, I, I'm very surprised by this. I mean, like I didn't know you existed this morning. So I just need to check in with Faraday and, um, yeah, I'll let you know like what's going on and he's like well no matter what I'm like really happy that I got to meet you in person and I just love your vibration and he's like there's something about your voice that is like very sexy and also healing and nourishing and I was like okay thank you like I was just kind of like blushing the whole time not because I don't I, I know this about myself but it's like it's nice to have it reflected in someone that you find really attractive. And of course, Faraday reflects this to me all the time and I love it and I honor that. And also, of course, it's sparky and new when it's like someone that you don't know and someone that you're like, ooh, you know, there's this like new spark with. So abundance of <laughs> sparkiness happening. It's funny because I feel even to this day like a little... So I'm going to go into this more about like my feelings about all of this. Um... But so we ended, you know, we ended the session, we hugged and he left. And then, you know, Faraday was in the house, like he was in the other room, like on his laptop doing stuff. And so I go in and talk to him and he's like, how was that? And I was like, it was not what I was expected. Like I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this. I was, and so I told him everything and he was like, cool, do you want to, you know, do you want to pursue it? And I was like, yeah, I, I feel excited too. I feel like I don't have any, obviously I don't have any expectations but I yeah I feel excited to explore it and I had been you know up until this point I had been like calling in like yeah more connections for people that can mirror me and reflect me and I you know Faraday and I have been very open open to openness and at the same time I realized that I it took so much I've had a lot of trauma in my life. Like if you know me, you know this, right? And I have worked through almost all of it, all of it, whatever, you know, it comes up here and there, but everything that's conscious in my awareness, I have done my best to work through, right? And with, when it comes to men, when it comes to being in a relationship with a man, when it comes to opening my heart to men and my body, mind, soul, everything, 
it has taken a lot of my energy and a lot of my trust to open myself to the idea that there are men that are safe for me to be vulnerable with that are, that are safe I think that's like <laughs> full stop like that are safe and and also it's men that like this this might sound funny to say but men that, that deserve me men that are on my level like I have done the work I know I'm fully in my power I know who I am I know my mission and someone who is on the same vibration in their power on the same mission and ready to co-create beautiful things and play and make love and all the things. And so it took me like, you know, probably like two or three years. I'm not saying this is going to be for everyone, but for me, my own personal journey to work through my trauma with men, like consciously really looking at everything, dating men, getting the reflections back, realizing what I wanted, what I didn't want. And choosing what I preferred and then holding this reality bubble of this is who I would love to be met by and I know that they exist. I know that they are out there. I know that they are also looking for me. I know that like, you know, like I, I, I'm excited that they're there and I'm, I'm just waiting for them to materialize into my reality. And then Faraday popped into my reality. So like I knew I could feel him coming energetically and I knew I wasn't sure if it was him. I wasn't attached to it being him specifically, but I knew that this person existed and that they were coming and they came and it was Faraday. And now I've realized that it took so much of my energy and I was focusing so much on this that I wasn't really holding this reality bubble that there was other beautiful men that didn't need to meet me on exactly all the same levels of that Faraday meets me. And also that are able to meet me in a way that's nourishing for me, you know, like someone that I can play with, someone that is in their joy, someone that has their stuff worked out, um, you know, someone that's stable and of a similar vibration and also on the new earth mission and like all the things, um, but just not, n doesn't need to be my person like Faraday is. And I really, after I realized that I wasn't like there, you know, there's many men that come into my world and that I connect with. And I always, I didn't realize this consciously, but I was holding them at a distance, a lot of them, because I was like, no, no, no. Like I don't, basically you don't deserve to come into my life in a romantic way. And I was also not really opening myself up to it to even explore whether it could be. So it's like, kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy like I decided mentally that they didn't meet me and so I don't really know if they met me because I wasn't really open to it to see if it could work blah 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 blah. so after realizing this I real I decided I am open I am open to be met I am open to having more connections and then this person just popped into my world right so that's why like literally that morning Faraday and I were talking about it and we talk about everything so I was like yeah I would love to have more connections with men and like have it be a beautiful thing and have you like them and you know have it be like a positive experience all around and he was like that's amazing I fully support that and then like literally an hour later this guy messaged me on Instagram and this whole story starts so the next day was um new moon in Scorpio and I'm I don't know if you believe in astrology but I will tell you on a very physical level, whenever I was born on the new moon, I'm also mostly Scorpio all, of, all up in my chart. So the Monday after, the day after I met this guy, I, we were going to go on, he invited, he asked me on a date. I said, yes. And then I did not feel good physically. Like literally my pineal gland was like throbbing and I just needed to lay down. I think I went to bed at like 7.30 that day. So I just messaged him and said, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> and then we were leaving for Malaysia on Wednesday. So it was like the only day that I was going to, that he, while he was still in town, as far as I knew, I think maybe he was in town another week, but I wasn't sure when I was coming back, blah, blah, blah. So we had decided on Tuesday. And I, this, so once I decided I was going, I checked or that I would want it to go. I checked in with Faraday one more time. And I asked him, I said, are you comfortable if I sleep with this person tonight? Like, I know we've talked about this esoterically and like in theory, but like, here is a person. I pos I'm going to meet up with them today. I possibly might make love with them. Like, are you actually okay with this? And I brought up some of my fears, which 
I realized like one of my main fears was me connecting to someone else causes d- disconnection with my partner, no matter how clear I am on like communicating our agreements and our boundaries and like my intention to honor whatever agreement we made. I've had times with partners in the past where like no matter how clear I was and no matter how much work I did to to make sure that their hearts were protected it was like somehow I would quote unquote get in trouble at the end like they would come up with a reason to be upset at me and I could sense that I was already starting to fear this with with Faraday and so I spoke this to him like uh, when we were on we were on the beach like when I decided I wanted to go on the date for sure like for sure for sure I checked in with him and so I brought this up and I was like tell me what you need in order to feel safe and like da 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 and he's like no I feel good I'm, I'm like happy that you're bringing this up and you're being so direct with me and then uh, having him like be supportive of it made me realize that I also had this like deeper belief that it's like hard to even talk about <laughs> because I feel so empowered but there's so much programming in me because of the religion I was raised in and society about this still this deeper belief of a woman being able to be in her pleasure, being able to be in her joy and, and feeling like a slut and feeling like, feeling like, does this make me a bad person? Me celebrating my sexuality and sensuality and yeah, being out there vibing and flirting and all this stuff. And I was like really asking myself like, cause I know consciously this is really dumb. Like I don't believe this on a conscious level, but then I'm like, okay, there's still something there. Subconsciously I have some deeper beliefs. So I want to bring this into my conscious awareness. And I was like looking at it and I was like, what is this? Like what, what actually is this? And I feel that there's, there's some part of it that's like, yes, I want to honor myself and make sure whoever I'm with honors me and like, you know, deserves me. But then it feels like this kind of like, purity puritism thing of like you must be pure like this like we're so programmed to be like in society it's so elevated this like virgin like she doesn't sleep with anyone she's pure she's ready for the one person to deflower her and I just and then like you look at men and it's like they're they're celebrating how many women they've slept with you know and they're like talking about it in detail with their friends and it's like completely the other extreme And I feel like it needs to be something in the middle, like some balance in the middle, which is, you know, I want to be in my joy and connecting with people where it's in flow and synchronistic and it feels good in my body. And I feel like they honor and respect who I am as a person. It's not just about my body. It's about like who I am on a soul level. Um, But I mean, all of that is also like a lot to put on someone when you first meet them. Right. So like there's, there's this, frozenness sometimes that happens with me where I'm like I want to be met on such a deep soul level and also you know let's flow and like see what happens um so like where's the balance in the middle so yeah it's like a lot you know and also I'm like a lot of people would not even want to go into all of this like just maybe maybe even listening to the story they're like yeah that's great that's for you but like I that would be too overwhelming for me and that's fine. Like I, I honor that as well. And for me, I know that when I'm going through all of this stuff, it is so exciting for me. It's like so, it feels so much growth, like, because I feel like also I am not only processing belief systems for myself, but like us as a collective, because so many people don't even go this far in the journey of exploration and relationships. And for me, so I feel like this like explorer, like with my hat on, like, okay, let's go. Let's see what happens. Oh, we have some belief here. Where did this come into from the society standpoint? Okay, this is stupid. Let's let that go. Bring that, you know, push that obstacle out of the way. Let's keep going. What else do we have? And so I felt really in my power, like having this conversation with Ferdy and like really excited to see what happened to explore, you know? So when we were at the beach, he was like, yeah, cool. Like, I want you to be happy, but like, do you know do you know this guy like do you trust him and like and I was like yeah I mean I know I don't know him but this is the point is like you hold this vibration of trust and you go explore in a way that feels safe in your body and so he's like yeah okay cool and I said do you want to meet him like well and he's like no no I I don't need to meet him like I trust you if you trust him and I just want you to be safe you know like he was just like I feel protective over you I want you to be okay and of course I want him to honor you and I said, okay. 
So I messaged the guy. We arranged for me to meet him. And then um, he, so it was really raining a lot during this time period. And he invited me over to his resort. And he was like, we can order room service. We can go in, you know, the pool. We can go in the sauna, whatever you want. And I was like, okay. And then Faraday was just like, you're not meeting. So then I tell Faraday this. And then he's like, you're not meeting him at a restaurant. Like I, I f- would feel more comfortable if you met him in public. And I was like, why? <laughs> what? I was just kind of confused. I was like, what does it matter? Because for me, meeting him in public, like it's raining a lot. I don't actually want to be driving around a lot. I want to just be, I want to be alone with him and be in an intimate connection space to see if I actually want to have a connection with him like for me I'm like all this other stuff is just like the surface level stuff I'm like let's get to the real stuff not that I'm not talking about sex I'm talking about connection and intimacy and like having a deep conversation with this person and having the privacy and the quietness because like here on the island when you're out in public it's like very loud I know many a lot of people there's just a lot of extra stimuli whereas if I'm like alone with him I can just talk to him and like vibe and see how the connection is and what I realized later is that it was with Faraday being concerned about this it was like literally from a safety perspective like he he was like I literally like you don't know this person and you're going to go be alone with him like are you literally safe and also I feel that for a lot of women there's this programming where if I'm alone with a man like especially if I'm alone with man in his space like in his house in, in his in his domain whatever that means then suddenly that means I have to go along with what he wants and I was feeling into this and I was like do women really believe this that like so for instance if you go to a guy's house that means automatically that you're gonna have sex or that you're going to you know like if it leads to that if he brings it to that level then you have to go along with it and I was because I told Fairy, I was like I don't care what this guy wants. If he, if I don't want to sleep with him, I'm not going to sleep with him. And he was like, okay, but I just like, are you sure? Like, I just want you to honor your body. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I do. And then, you know, for like one second, Faraday like saw the guy when he came over, when I did the human design reading. And he was like, I saw him. I didn't really like his vibration. And I, I'm realizing now I actually want to like meet the person and, feel good like I want to feel excited for you to meet them I want to feel like that this is like someone who deserves you and all this stuff and I said I I I asked you if you want to meet him like do you want to meet him I don't have to meet him now and he's like no no it's fine and um and then like he brought up some other fears about like just like legitimate ones like last time that I connected with someone in Amsterdam I um I came back and I was having a really hard time connecting with Faraday again and apparently I was and I, I own this, that I was comparing my sexual connection from the other guy to my sexual connection with Faraday, which is not fair. And he was like concerned that this would happen again. Like for instance, basically like that I would go have a really nice time with this guy and come home and then in whatever way tell Faraday that, you know, it, it or insinuate in some way that it was better with this other guy sexually or that Faraday wasn't living up to something. And no one wants to feel like that, you know? And so I said, I'm really sorry, you know? And also I was frustrated because he was bringing, I had hours earlier, I had asked him and held the space for all of these things to come up before I even decided, before I even messaged the guy to go on the date. And he, you know, was like, no, I'm fine. Everything's great. And then like literally 10 minutes before I'm leaving, like I want to be in my excitement and like getting ready and like, you know, doing all the girly things like, doing my hair and makeup and figuring out what I'm going to wear and Faraday like needs to be hosted in that moment so like for me timing wise it was terrible and I was really frustrated with him that he brought it up in that moment and I even said and he's like I don't feel like you're fully present with me I don't feel like you're really feeling me and I'm like I am doing the best I can and also I want to leave you know like I, I I'm excited to go on this date like we have the whole rest of the week we're going to be in Malaysia together alone where we can talk about everything that you want to process right now but like right I said right now I want to be excited and go like this is this an emergency that you need to talk about this and he was like well I just don't want this you to come home and to be a thing I said it's not going to be a thing thank you for telling me and I'm happy to process this more later but like I want to be in my joy right now and like 
I want to have fun. Like, I don't want to be in like fear that this guy's going to hurt me. I don't want to feel like I'm going to hurt you. Like, I just, can we just play? Like, this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're just supposed to be playing. And he was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Just go have fun. But he's, I could tell like he, I left the house with Faraday, not happy. Like that's, I'll just say that. And like creating disconnection or feeling dis. he said, I feel disconnected from you. Or I feel like I can't share my feelings with you. And I'm like, I am doing the best I can. And I realized later also, I will own up to something that because I'm so used to me going and playing with someone else, causing disconnection with my partner just because they are feeling insecure or whatever. I'm not saying this is Faraday, but in the past, this is what happened with other people that I, because I was so used to that dynamic that I already had a guard up like emotionally with Faraday, like when I was getting ready to go and this is, he could feel this. So he was talking about something that he was insecure about or that he was feeling yeah like worried about like me coming home and like comparing how the sex was with how it was with him and I was just kind of already shut down like I was like not fully present and it's because I'm so in the past I was so used to being hurt by me feeling heart open like my inner child like excited to go play with someone and then coming home and my partner just like figure finding reasons to make me feel like a bad person you know like finding reasons to try and make me feel like I did something wrong when I did everything I could to play in the way that we had agreed so I own that I was not very heart open with Faraday when I left and this is something that we know we're learning we're figuring out and also I really wish that he could have been like owned like yeah I have some insecurities coming up but this is Brittany's time to play and I want her to go just go have fun and I'm gonna like do my best to create that energy bubble for her to just play so I also told him this and he you know we're learning so anyways I go over to the guy's hotel his resort and we sit down and we you know we have drink some tea and we talk and um you know, we're like vibing, we're flirting, we're having a good time. And then I, I asked him straight up, I was like, what do you want out of this connection? Um, this is, I don't know if you know this, but this is called an aftercare talk. So it's kind of like you talk about if we connect sexually, what is it going to look like? How is our dynamic going to look like afterwards? So this is called aftercare talk. Like what is the aftercare going to happen if we have sex and you do this before you have sex yes you do this before you kiss before there's any sort of I mean if you want to but this is what I do because this makes my body feel very safe to drop in because I know what game we're playing everything's a game and I don't mean that in like a people are trying to screw each other over. I mean, like everything is like we are playing this dynamic out together. And how can we play a game where we all feel good and we all go home feeling like very empowered and good in our bodies and yummy and all the things, all the positive things. And a lot of people are, are nervous to be the first one to bring up this kind of conversation. And I will tell you that it is if you are the one who brings it up, the other person will be so, how do I put this? They will really respect you for bringing this up. Like they might be a little surprised, like, wow, that person, you're being very direct. And then at the same time, they're like, wow, this person is so in their power that they are just like going for it because they're not going to just accept a connection that is below their standards. So basically this is the conversation you're having. It's like, this is the connection kind of level I want to connect on. Are, do you meet the standard or, you know, do we need to adjust how we connect tonight? Because I need to know that it's going to meet my standard and feel good in my body. So I asked him like, you know, yeah, if we have sex or like, wh- what are you looking for right now? And he said, you know, I just came out of a really long term relationship and a very monogamous relationship where I wanted to be open and my partner didn't. And I am finding myself and I want to play and, you know, like, he just is basically like, I'm not looking for a long-term like relationship or anything. Like basically I don't not even like looking for a connection outside of me being here on the Island for this time. And I said, that's fine. That's great. Like I, and what I said to him was like, this is really where I was at in the moment. I'm so grateful for this situation because it helped me figure out something really important because he said, what, what about you? I th- and I could tell that he was nervous. Like, 
are like do you want do you also want this or like kind of like are you looking for something serious more serious and I said to him I'm like I'm not looking for anything long I'm not looking I'm not looking for anything honestly but what I am trying to figure out is I said to him I was like I've had many loverships with loverships (laughs) it means like you know, you're in, you know, you have a little bit of lovemaking with someone who's here. You have a nice connection. I said, I've had many of these like loverships with people who are coming through on the island and leaving. And sometimes it felt good and sometimes it didn't feel good. And then I've had connections, loverships with people who live here on the island. And, you know, it doesn't mean we were in each other's lives all the time, but, you know, we would come together once every couple of weeks, make love and have a nice connection time. And some of those felt really good and some of them didn't. And I was trying to figure out what is the formula for me that feels the most nourishing in my body and my soul? Like, what is it? Is it that the person stays on the island? Is it the person that the person's in my community? Is it that the person's not in my community and they can just go have fun with them and then they don't interact in my everyday life? And I said this and I was like, I don't really know what it is. And that's also why I'm here because I really enjoy our connection or the vibration that I feel and I'd love to explore it. And like, yeah, I don't really know what I'm looking for. And he was like, okay, great. (laughs) That sounds like we're on the same page. Like we're just both exploring. And, um, and we just talked about more about my relationship with Faraday and like, you know, our dynamic and, and, and then I, he was like, well, what do you want to do now? (laughs) And I was like, well, have you ever done eye gazing? And I was like, this is such a Copanyong thing to say, but here on the island, we do this all the time. And if you don't know what eye gazing is, it's you sit facing each other. It's nice to hold hands if you feel comfortable and you put a timer on and maybe some music and you literally just look each other in the eye for like five minutes without talking. And from a very scientific perspective, this aligns your heartbeats because you start naturally like start breathing together. And there's a lot of energetic vibrational things happening when we close our mouths. Like there's so much to sharing space energetically with someone and allowing like I I always believe that it's like our higher selves have more time to talk to each other when we just shut up. Uh, and also like we are literally like connecting heart to heart through our eyes because they say the eyes are the window to the soul. So I invite you if you're having any time like with friends, lovers, whoever, where you want to have like a, just a moment where you just drop in, also drop into your body because it really help, gives you space to like drop into how you're feeling in your body and, and connect to each other um, to initiate, hey, you want to do some eye gazing? And people... I've found that people in the outside world, you know, not on the island, they find this very weird to begin with because it's just like, well, what are we doing? This is so woo-woo. It's so spiritual. And then when you actually do it, it's like so nice. Like I do this in all my events. It doesn't matter what kind of events they are. I, (laughs) the other day I had a friend's birthday party and I suggested that we all drop in and do eye gazing when we first got there and like everyone loved it. They were like, wow, can we do more of this? So anyway, they did this with the guy. And I asked him at the end, usually I ask like the person, like, what did you see? Because usually you can pick up on things vibrationally with each other. And he's like, I just feel really safe with you. I feel like so like, yeah, just at home here in this situation. Of course, I feel really attracted to you. And yeah, I'm just happy, happy to be here. He was just happy. And what I sensed in him was like, I said, can I share what I sense in you? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I sense like a wall. Like I sense, I sense like you are wanting to be free, but you don't quite know how to do that. Like emotionally, energetically. And he, I could tell he was like, whoa, fuck. She sees me. Cause he's like, at first was like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, actually that's true. And I said to him, I was like, I'm someone you don't know. Like you can just be straight up with me. Like I was like, why do you have a wall up? Like I'm not judging you. I don't know. Like I don't not in your everyday life. Like I'm actually a very safe person to let this wall down because you know, it could potentially like never, you know, could potentially never see me again. So you could use this as an opportunity to open up and you know, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, um, he's Israeli. So he was like, I, you know, I, I was in the I was in the army for longer than I wanted to be, and now that the war is happening, I feel like a lot of like PTSD coming up, and just a lot of emotions around everything that's happening, and also, um, 
yeah he's like i just don't feel like i've ever really he's like i always like just sense that i need to be cautious of what happens next kind of yeah it's like ptsd it's like when you feel unsafe you are constantly in your head sensing is the environment safe am i okay like is there like basically i need to be three steps ahead and i asked him i said do you feel safe in your body like right now in this moment and he was like i don't know what that means <laughs> i'm like okay okay like I, I get it um and i have absolutely no judgment of this i was just like i want to connect and this person is not able to connect you know that's kind of how i was feeling um and when i said to him like i feel like you want to be free you don't really know how to and he was like well maybe you can be you can help me be free or something like this and i was just like no that's not sexy like i'm not i mean you can hire me to be your coach but like i'm not this is this is also a thing i want to speak to women here that there's this thing where like the archetypes that we go through as women is like the girl who is like you know not of age to have sexual relationships so you're just like this this girl who's playing and, and like you know in your childhood mode and then when you go the next archetype is the maiden which is someone that you can make love and you know you use your sexual energy to affect everything beautifully around you and a lot of women when they're in the maiden archetype they want to heal the men around them through their sexuality through yeah their heart and their love I have been in the maiden archetype for many years of my life. And then the next level is the crone energy, which is like this very wise, mature woman who is like the high priestess archetype. And that's like where I'm at now. Like I'm like, I know who I am. I know my power. I I know my abilities to heal and do all these things, but I, I don't need to do this. Like I, I, like <laughs> I want to be with people who are already on this level and we can just play and we can just vibe, you know? Or, or hire me and let's do a session where I actually coach you and work with you and like move the energy through your body. Like boundaries, you know? Um, but I'm not going to go around doing, giving my energy away to people who are not able to meet me. Like I, it's not my job to get you on the level where you can meet me. It is your job to be on that level and then we can play. Or you can do an energy exchange where you like hire me like for a session or coaching or whatever or where I help you get on that level. This has taken me many years to figure out. I cannot tell you how much energy I have put into men who I don't know later if they actually deserved it or if the energy came back. A lot of them it didn't. But I always believe that the energy comes back through me learning. I believe the energy comes back in other ways. So I don't have any resentment or anything, but you know, you learned your boundaries. So anyways, back to the story. So he's like, okay, this was fun. I gave him blah, blah, blah. He's like, do you have any idea of what you want to do next? And I was like, no, <laughs> like I'm just here. And then he's like, well, I would do, do you want a massage? I would love to give you a massage. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. I was like, do you want to give me one? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I even brought, I bought like some nice oils and um, yeah, he's like, I'm very excited to do this. And so we like put on like nice lighting and the music and I got naked, he got naked, and he's like, you know, giving me this really beautiful oil massage. It was actually very good. I will give him that. Um, and then I just, I didn't feel anything in my body. And this is something that I realized is that I have done all of the physical play, you know, especially through my play parties, like where I'm able to play with men and women and, and, just be yeah my child my maiden whatever and now I'm in my highest priestess mode and I'm like I don't want to just connect to your body I choose to connect to your soul and your mind and your spirit and all of this and if you have a wall up this is not there is nothing to connect to and so he's massaging my back and like, you know, and then he's like, roll over and he's like massaging my front, massaging my boobs. And then I c feel like he's about to go down to my pussy. And I was just like, actually, I'm sorry, this is not happening. <laughs> he's like on top of me, like ready to like go for it, you know? And I was just like, I I'm really sorry. This is like, I, I just is not happening for me. And he's like, okay, I honor that. And then he like gets off and I'm like, um... I said something like really beautiful. I wrote it down because I want to make sure I say it. I, 
I lit- like I felt like I was channeling this and I was like, I want to be with someone whose heart is already open. I don't want to be the reason why you open your heart. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, like this is, this is nothing against you. Like, I think you're very beautiful and a really nice person. I'm sure many women would love to sleep with you and just be excited just to sleep with you. But for me, like, it doesn't give me anything. I want to connect your heart. And, and he was like, okay, I get that. I think he, you know, he was doing his best to host it and also not feel shut down. And I honor that. And he was like, I'm, he said, I'm really happy that you spoke up and that you didn't just like keep going. And I was like, yeah, of course. I was like, of course I always honor my body. But then I was thinking, I don't think a lot of women, like, I don't think, I don't want to say a lot of women. I think it is very hard for women to do this. Like once they're in that situation, a lot of women feel like, okay, I have to go along with this because I'm already here. Like, so worried about s- displeasing the p- other person that they're not sticking up for themselves. And I'm like, here to tell you, if you're with a really good guy who honors you and honors your body, they are just, all they care about is that you speak up for whatever your body needs in that moment. And if they don't honor your body and give you shit about it, then they don't deserve to be anywhere near you. So again, like that's another reason to get them the fuck out of your life and not into your body. Like literally do not let them penetrate you. Um, So anyways, I was like, now I have oil all over me. And he's like, yeah, you want to take a shower? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, it's just so funny because it felt after I said, no, I don't want to connect. It actually felt more intimate because I was being completely real and he was like meeting me on that level like he I think it was so shocking to him or activating to him that I was like in his bed naked ready about ready to make love and suddenly I wasn't gonna do that because it wasn't the right connection for me that he was like oh okay and then I I said to him I'm like I'm really grateful for this situation because It's helping me to clarify that it doesn't matter for me. This is is the big download out of all of it is that it doesn't matter to me if the person is in my life for one day or five years or forever. What matters to me is that in the moment that we are together, that we are heart open connected to each other, that we are intimate with each other on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, that like I actually can feel the person and they're fully present with me because then it's real. Then then it's nourishing for me. And it doesn't matter if we make love or if we just cuddle or if we just have this amazing deep connection where our hearts are open to each other. And I was like, this is this is the kind of connection that I want in my life. And I'm so grateful that I know this now because then I don't need to create these boundaries with, oh, the person's only on the island for a week or or that person lives in my community and I have to see them every day. So like, I don't know, this, you know, and it's just like, can this person hold that when we are together, you know, they can honor and respect our connection and be heart open. And when I see them again, whether we are intimate on a deep, deeper level like sex, can they still honor and hold the connection of the heart openness, like all the way through, whether it's friendship, you know, intimate, more sensual or sexual are they able to be in their authenticity wherever that means for them in that moment doesn't mean they need to be perfect or you know the best of the best but like are they really being real and authentic and in their heart open to me and vulnerable because this is how I always am it doesn't matter if I'm crying it doesn't matter if I'm really upset and like wow or if I'm like in my happy pleasure you know like my sensualness, my inner child. I am just me. I am just fully here, fully present in a world where most people are shut down. And something that I really enjoy about this island is it starts to break away those walls with people. And I see this like the longer someone's on the island, the island energetically and also, um, you know, people come here to do the work. They come here to open to open themselves, and and it's a safe place to do that. I'm just waiting one second for Afro. Um. So yeah, I was super excited that I figured this out. That I was like, okay, so, you know, I would love for the person to be on a similar vibration to me, to be in their joy, to, 
you know, to, to be heart open and ready to play, whether that's going to a waterfall together, whether that's rolling around in bed, making love for hours or getting a cacao or like, you know, whatever we end up doing is that we both feel that we can be safe to be dropped into our bodies, heart open with each other and just vibing, like having the best time, you know, and I am so open to more of those connections. So yeah, just putting this out to the world. If you are one of those people that want to connect on that level, now you know what I'm looking for. Um, and something else that I, I realized is that so many people use sex as the only form of intimacy when in actuality it's like they want to connect emotionally and they feel that they have to put this all into a box of okay we are having sex and so therefore now we can open our hearts when in reality like it might be more nourishing to cuddle and talk or you know like what I'm trying to say is like a lot of times people are seeking emotional connection and intimacy, like emotional intimacy. Like I'm close to you, our hearts are open, we can be safe and vulnerable with each other. And they are trying to connect physically without opening their hearts, just like these bodies connecting to each other, hoping that in some of those moments, they will catch this glimpse of emotional intimacy and the nourishment that comes with that. And I'm like, that is so weird. Why do people do that? Like, why don't we just straight up be heart open with each other? And, and then like, it feels good all the way through. And then like the actual having sex is less of this huge thing because it's like, I already have the emotional connection. I'm connected to myself. You're connected to yourself and we can connect to each other. And then whether we have sex or we just sit here and hold hands, we get that nourishment that we're looking for, you know, and that everyone is craving, everyone is craving this connection and this deeper intimacy with ourselves and with the people that we can feel safe with. Um, and yeah, and so like, I realized that for me, I need the heart open first. Um, and then the making love is like a deeper connection of that already found, like the foundation is that we are heart open and that we feel safe to be real with each other. And then the making love is like, you know, like a deeper form of that connection. But the heart open has to happen first. Otherwise, it's like, like my body just literally doesn't react. Like it doesn't matter if you're like the hottest guy ever and you're so into me and you're saying all the right things and, and doing all the right things to my body. Like this guy was giving me a lot of pleasure physically. And at the same time, my heart was like, I just, I just felt alone. Like I was like, I don't want to be with people where I feel alone with them. I don't feel alone when I'm by myself. I love being with myself because I know who I am. I'm heart open with myself. Like the connection, the energy connection is going all the way through my body in a really beautiful, yummy way. And I'm w when I'm with Faraday, I don't feel alone because we are, hearts are both open to each other and the energy is going really beautifully back and forth. If you look at it literally from an energy standpoint, your higher self, your soul is doing its best to pour energy into you life force energy like imagine this gold warm light going all the way from the top of your head down through your body and circulating like back and forth back and forth and when you have your heart closed it's literally getting stuck like the energy flow is getting stuck and if your heart is closed you cannot circulate not only the energy back and forth through your body but when your heart is open to another person you can circulate the energy from your body into their body and back and this is where the nourishment comes in because we each have different pieces of the puzzle of ways that we can nourish each other through our energy connection. It's literally all energy. That's why, like, sometimes when I'm making love with someone, a lot of times I close my eyes and I just imagine our energy bodies merging and making love and expanding. And, like, I get literal DMT visions. This is one thing I said to the guy when I was leaving and, like, putting my clothes back on. I was like, having physical sex doesn't really do it for me anymore like I'm on the level where I'm literally having like DMT type visions when I'm making love and it's like tantra and like heart open and connected and like full body orgasms that doesn't come with heart closed just b bodies fucking each other you know and the most I've realized most of the world is just doing this like literally a lot of times like lights off eyes closed like let's just fuck and hope that something happens 
And it's like, that's so sad. There's so much more. There's so much more. And it all starts with feeling. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It all starts with feeling good in your body. And hold on. My, I like knocked the podcast equipment over. <laughs> um, it all starts with feeling good in your body and feeling like safe enough to be dropped into yourself. Let the energy go through and have your heart open to share that energy with the other person. And yeah and like don't lower your standards like make standards for how who you want to connect like what level of depth of emotional reality do you want to connect on and know that there are people out there men women others that are wanting to connect with you on that level they are out there hold the reality bubble that they exist do not lower your standards because a lot of times people get lonely i've done this in the past also where i got lonely and i lowered my standards and allowed myself to connect with someone who didn't meet me in the emotional depths that i wanted to meet or in the heart openness that i wanted to be met and i had a physical connection with them and it just made me feel more lonely afterwards it wasn't even a, i mean a lot of people also have like shame and guilt around like the whole thing about like sharing your body with someone that doesn't deserve it there is that the feeling like you disrespected yourself. But I feel like a lot of it is feeling more lonely than what you started with. Like I thought I spent energy with this person. I thought it was going to help me feel nourished. And then now I feel like I just gave them my energy and I feel less nourished. Like it's just straight up. So yeah, honor yourself, honor your body. That is my tip. And like, yeah, my big epiphany is it doesn't matter if the person's in my life for one day or a million years. It's that can we connect on a heart open level? Are they on my vibration of like joy and new earth vibes and we can play together and have fun? And yeah, does this connection feel nourishing for my heart first? Because if it feels nourishing for my heart. It will feel nourishing for my body and my soul. And I will have all the pleasure from that. So... That is my download for today. <laughs> and make sure that you are not the reason why someone opens their heart. Make sure that you allow yourself to connect with people whose heart is already open. You deserve that. We all deserve that. And if your heart is not open, then don't connect with people. Go do the work and connect with yourself first and allow yourself to feel safe to drop into your body and open your heart. You deserve that as well. So yeah, things are good. We just got back from Malaysia. Um, just to give you a general life update, we just got back from Malaysia. It was a very um, traumatic experience in the embassy there. I cannot go into the details because some of it was um, like <laughs> on paper illegal that we got things moved through. But it all worked out. And I definitely feel like our higher selves were like literally miracles happened yes, two days ago that helped us be able to get our work visas and get across the border and have everything work out. And um, yeah, I, I feel very in my integrity about everything and also just like, why did it need to be that hard? <laughs> um, but I was really proud of myself for staying in my center and staying grounded and being my authentic self and my soft, vulnerable self. And I realized that when you are just real and you're not pushing things and you're just in the acceptance and also like I was crying a lot because I was like, there was moments where we were like getting denied our work permits and getting denied getting back into the country at the border and lots of this moments of like, what is going to happen now? Like, can I even go home? And I just cried <laughs> and just stayed in my softness. And then people were like, oh, okay, stop crying. Let's help you. Um, so it all worked out. Um, and now we are back in the collective. It's not raining anymore. It's very sunny. We have so many friends coming this week. It's very nice one year anniversary on November 28th, which I'm very excited about. Um, and yeah, high season is starting in like two weeks. Um, and so we're going to do lots of play parties and we're starting our aesthetic dances December 16th. So every Saturday, um, starting December 16th, we are going to do a day aesthetic dance, which is like a little mini festival, our community coming together, like 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. where we... Uh, are listening we are dancing to the best music ever vegan potluck everyone getting cozy and cuddly and just 
it's a time for tribe to come together you know like this is going to be the foundation of our community this high season and i'm so excited to host these and if you are interested in volunteering or djing please reach out because this is a co-creation with our whole community and we're so excited for you guys to be part of it in whatever way you feel called to and yeah so excited to s meet all of you that come out um i know so many of you are coming to the island this winter um and if you are looking to have one of these human design readings i'm doing them so reach out to me on instagram at Brittany bond and i would be happy to do a reading i mean i love meeting all of you in person it's so fun like it's so fun um so yeah so much fun stuff i'm gonna go to the waterfall now and just vibe in nature because i'm in malaysia in the city concrete jungle for a couple of days and it is time for me to yeah connect back to nature Okay, sending you guys lots of love and I hope you have an amazing day and let me know what you thought of this story. I mean, like, it just like, oh, I forgot to say I came home and I feel like Faraday was really happy that I honored my body. Like, I feel like, you know, there's this like trust, like there's trust that we have for each other and then there's trust proven. Like we go through an experience together and then we prove that we can trust each other and it's like he now has an experience where he where I've proven that I can honor myself you know because for men like they have this thing where they really literally just want to protect me like physically like are you okay emotionally are you okay and I love that and I honor that and also I can I can protect myself I I can honor my body it says I've been doing this before Faraday came into my life and I'm grateful that he's here and also wants to help with this so yeah um there was many more things that came up after that but we worked through all of it and it basically was just like us choosing each other us being able to be heart open with each other and and also yeah like being open to these connections that are nourishing for our soul and that feel good in our bodies and people that we are building a new earth with you know like my my vision is that we don't need, I don't need to host a play party anymore. This is just what we all do when we get together. Maybe not all like, maybe not that sexual, but like that we can all be cuddly with each other and that we can vibe with each other. And it's like, we have this heart openness and this communication and respect with each other that people can be able to play with each other romantically in a way that feels safe and good in all of our bodies. Um, I've had this in the past in my communities here on the islands and I'm excited for to have this with Faraday and our new community that we're building. So, ah, so many more things to say, but I think I'll leave it at that. And yeah, excited to make more podcasts this week and share with you guys. There's more things that are going on. Um, sometimes it's like so many things are happening that it's hard to keep track of everything. Um, so I'm just going to make more podcasts and put this out there. So sending you lots of love. Hope you have an amazing day and I will talk to you later. Bye.